2517 has been discontinued. It's now replaced by the RCI 69 base. And this video will show the DX2517 with the AC mod controls mounted in the front panel. We're also gonna set up the AC mod DX2517 with the Behringer DEQ2496 Ultra Curve three band mastering processor. We're gonna program it according to the instructions by NEU9N and we're gonna test it out with the RE20 microphone. Here we have Clifton's 2517 and he sent it in to upgrade it with AC Mod 6. Although the DX2517 has been around for some years and it's been a good radio, it has been discontinued and will be replaced now by the new Ranger RCI69 base. So hello and welcome to another AC Mod video. Here we have Clifton's DX2517 and we just put in at the AC Mod 6, the AC Mod controls, and the front panel. Clifton wanted the standalone unit to be able to adjust on the fly his output to match the different amplifiers that he uses. And instead of putting the AC Mod standalone, we went ahead and put the three controls necessary to control the AC Mod right in the front of the unit. Due to the fact that uh, he has very tight space in his desk, this will allow him easy access to the controls without the cables required for the standalone unit connection. In this particular installation, all the modes are functional. Uh, FM has individual control from the AM set by the AC mod. Um, it's got the signal meter mute while TX. It's got the AVFO wind effect and everything works as it should from factory. So we'll go ahead and give it a little test run now. We'll see how it performs. The DX2517 and the AC Mod 6. Before we start the demo, let me just explain. Here we have the carrier control, which adjusts your carrier level on AM. You have your modulation control, and you have your asymmetry control. All nicely available at the front panel. So we'll start by trying it out on FM. Put it on FM, and we'll key up and you'll be able to use your power control here for FM. You set your carrier as you wish on FM. And uh, we could try AM. Now on AM, your carrier is controlled by the AC mod. So right now we have it set for a one watt, one watt, and of course we could vary that to whatever we want, but you could pretty much set it anywhere you want to. Half a watt, one watt, two watts, three watts, five watts, 10 watts. Sideband, we've done all the ESSB mods, so you should be sounding a lot better in sideband. And of course, we've done all the receive mods uh, from the audio detectors all the way to the audio amplifier, including the 6 kilohertz filter. Okay, we'll start by keying it up. We'll bring all the controls down on the AC mod. And we're gonna set it for a one watt carrier. So we're gonna bring up the carrier up to one watt. There we go. One watt carrier. We have the reference set in our O-scope. And then we're gonna go ahead and run our signal generator. And as you can see, we have our modulated envelope and we'll bring up the modulation just a tad bit. So we go to the negative 99s. 
right there. That's your 100% modulation. Now, with your asymmetry, sound a little louder, you can bring it up. That's 200% modulation. As you can see, the loudness changes as you change your asymmetry. Again, we're going to key it up and we're going to lower the asymmetry. We're going to go ahead and transmit. And this, we see 100% modulation on the scope. See the normal readings on the meter. As we bring up the asymmetry, you'll see the meters, the modulation and your power output both go up. As well as you can see over there on the scope, now we're doing 200% modulation. So there you have it. your DX2517 with the AC Mod 6 Hi Fi asymmetrical transceiver. The new AC Mod RCI69 base will be available at our online store at www.acmod.am. In this video, we'll be showing you a method how to adjust the AC mod controls using pure voice without the use of a tone generator. This will be our setup for today. We'll be running the DX2517 with the Behringer DEQ2496 tube pre. Um, we're gonna use for the preamp. Uh, we obviously have to use a preamp for the microphone when we're running the DEQ2496. We'll be recording here in Vegas. We're gonna monitor our modulation during the O-scope and we'll first try it out with the hand mic. Then we'll try it out with the uh, RE20 and then we're gonna try it out with the Shure SM58. We will be recording live the audio received by this ICOM IC706 MK2G. I'll be directly fed into the laptop right here. So we'll do a first test. We'll be running the stock Galaxy microphone straight into the radio through the AC mod and out. No processing. We'll put the asymmetry all the way down. And uh, we'll start recording here on Sony Vegas. And we'll key up the mic. Audio one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three. We should see there about 100% modulation. One, two, three, four, five. Audio one, two. Audio one, two, about your four watts. Uh, a little bit of straight peaks because we don't have any compression or limiting. So uh, yeah, as long as you keep your uh, voice at the same level, you should be doing your 100% modulation, as you can see right there. Audio one, two, three, four. We'll go ahead and put the asymmetry up a little bit. What we heard there was very tinny audio, very low quality audio coming from the stuck microphone. The only advantage we saw there was that when we increase the asymmetry, we get louder audio, but your audio bandwidth is three kilohertz. So it sounds very, very tinny. Now we'll go ahead and uh, try it out with the RE20 studio mic with the audio processed by the DEQ2496 and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so we're ready to give it a test run with the DEQ2486 and the RE20 mic. This is the correct setting for the RE20 on the tube pre, the drive at nine o'clock and the gain at three o'clock. For the SM58, we're gonna have to readjust that. Let's go ahead and start the recording. Bring the asymmetry all the way down, key up the radio and see what we got. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, we see 100% modulation right there, about eight watts PEP on the meter. 
uh, we're receiving out of the IC706 right here. And um, we had to go in and do various uh, changes in the DEQ. Uh, we had to add a um, equalizer, a graphic equalizer to get it just right. But it is sounding pretty good right now. So we're pretty happy with the settings. It is time consuming to get it right. Uh, you know, adjusting the PEQ and the DEQ. But uh, other than that, I think it's sounding pretty good. So there you have it, 100% modulation. We'll go ahead and raise up the asymmetry just a little bit. And uh, you'll see the peaks come up to about 200% there. And uh, also the PEP meter, we're up to about 15 watts PEP. So next we'll go ahead and try out the... Um, the SM58, the shore mic right here. It does sound a lot bassier than the RE20, so we'll see how that works out. Okay, so we have installed the SM58 microphone. We'll go ahead and put the screen on it, and we'll give it a test run. Okay, so we're ready to test out the SM58. Let's start recording on Vegas. Let's key up the radio. And uh, we have our 2 watt dead key swinging to about 8 watts. It gives us our 100% modulation right there. This is the SM58. It actually sounds really good on the headphones as we receive out of these uh, IC7906. And um, we did not do any adjustments on the DEQ 2496. Uh, we just adjusted the gain on the um, on the tube preamp right here instead of um, uh, I'm sorry on the drive. We instead of having it at nine o'clock, we brought it down to um, to the minimum. So it sounds pretty good. At least it does in the headphones. I still have to hear it in the recording. But there you have it, the SM58 along with the DEQ2496 and the DX2517. Now let's go ahead and uh, bring up the asymmetry just a little bit, see what it sounds like. And uh, we'll see the peaks there go up now on the oscilloscope. Um, with the SM58, you see the peaks are about 200% right there. Uh, do one, two, three, four, five. And, of course, our um, PEP power also has gone up to about 15 watts PEP right there. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the, um, <clears throat> the results in the computer, and uh, we'll compare it to the uh, RE20.